Howdy Jeepers, Mike here in the BFH garage. Today, we're gonna take a look inside of an ARB air locker. So my air locker has been uh, having some issues on the trail where it's intermittently locking. It won't lock all the time. And so I'm not sure whether it's the locker or whether it's the compressor. I've been in touch with ARB uh, customer support. And by the way, those guys are phenomenal. We're kind of leaning towards the compressor being the issue, but I want to rule the locker out while I have it out anyway for a re-gear. So we're going to pull this out, take it completely apart and see if that's our issue. Okay, so now that we have the locker out of the differential and up on the table here, let's start going through and talking about parts as I take it apart. So outside we have the uh, original OEM master shim for the axle. We then have the, what's known as the seal housing. And the seal housing is where the uh, airline comes in from the outside of the differential into the inside brings air down here and that's what actuates it. Inside there's a couple O-rings there. And then what you have on this side is what is known as a ARB master shim. And so this master shim goes with the seal and then you could make any uh, uh, shim adjustments under there if necessary. So make sure that we keep our shims to the appropriate sides. We're not uh, trying to guess at what our next re-gear is going to be. So that sits there and we are good to go with the exception of the race for the, the bearing. So I'm going to put that on top of that stack. Same thing on the other side. You have your OEM master shim. Then you have your shim stack to, to set your carrier placement. And then you also have another ARB master shim. And the way this all goes is your OEM shim goes to the outside your ARB master shim goes to the inside up against the bearing race and then your shim stack goes between, gets sandwiched. And then you also have your race on the other side. So I'm gonna keep those on that side to make sure that I don't mix up what goes where. So pulling this apart, we have to take the ring gear off first. Um, as you guys can see, I had marks on the bolts to tell me uh, which sequence to tighten those up in when I was tightening this uh, gear job up. So that's why those are marked. Easiest way to get a rear ge uh, ring gear off is with a impact wrench. You don't have one. It does make the job a little bit tougher, but uh, not impossible. You just got to work your way through it. have a lot of gear oil that gets in all this stuff so you're going to, have to wipe all that up too
So if that gives you much problems, you can just put a bolt in there if you're not going to reuse your gears. Pop it out that way. Voila. Okay, so let's take and turn this over. And what we need to do now is remove these retaining pins. Always one. There we go. So your retaining pin looks like that. It's threaded there. Allen wrench there. So we'll take out the pin. Okay, so now that we have the countersunk pins out, if I pull up on the housing this way, all the side gears and all that stuff can fall right out. So we're gonna turn it over. I'm gonna pick up from the bearing here. We're gonna pull this off. So if you look here, uh, on the inside here, we have our clutch gear. And there's a whole bunch of springs, 12 springs to be exact. Now you have to be very careful that when you take this apart, um, some of these screws, or I'm sorry, some of these springs can fall right out. So you have to be very careful to not lose any of those. So I'm gonna set this here. I'll move this out of the way. Let's concentrate on this side just a little bit. So again, you have a, you have a clutch gear here. If you look on the back side, let me find the hole right here. So if you look real closely, there's a hole there. That hole, lines up with the seal housing hole. I mean, it doesn't have to be lined up to it, but it, it runs along the same channel. So when you look at the seal housing, it has two O-rings in there, and that channels all that air to the uh, inside of the locker here. So I'm gonna slide this on, and I'll show you why here in just a second. So anytime you put your seal housing on, you wanna kinda twist it as you're doing it to not tear or hurt your O-rings. So what happens now that I have that on there, air goes through and it comes in behind this clutch gear. Behind this clutch gear, there is a bonded seal. The bonded seal pushes this way and the clutch gear locks into your side gears and the other part of the uh, locker. So this clutch gear just doesn't pull out easy for me. So I'm gonna have to add some air to it and it should pop right up. See what happens here. So you see how I added air, and that happened really fast, but you see how the clutch gear popped right up. Otherwise, this thing's a pain in the rear to get up. And to be honest with you, it's still kind of a pain to get out all the way. Let me find one of these loose ones. Well, let me put that back in there and I'm gonna see if I can add some more air and make it pop up the rest of the way. There it goes. Oh, come on, there you go. 
So here it is. So here's your clutch gear. On the back has that U-channel. 12 springs, don't lose any springs. And let me wipe off the bonded seal and then I'll show you what that looks like. All right. So here you have what's called a bonded seal, has a U-shaped channel along the back side. And that fits into this half of the case like so, and it pushes down and in there, and the air again forces it up, and that's what pushes the clutch gear over to lock onto your side gear, and we'll get into that next. So I'm just gonna set this down over here for now, out of the way. I'm going to take my seal housing back off so I don't damage that. Set that off to the side. So now we have this half of the case. There's no other loose moving parts other than the bearing, but none of the case. So if I bring the, in fact, I'll turn it sideways and see if you get a better view. So I'll bring over this half of the case here. Now, if, you're, if you notice, the gears here line up with your clutch gear. So when this gets, imagine this being this way, is the air enters from behind your bonded seal. It pushes everything out to the side and then your clutch gear goes on to your side gear. That's what locks your axle uh, sides together. Hence the term locker, locks everything together. Let's pull that back out. Get you a close up here. So if you look inside this half here, very similar to a normal differential. You have your side gear, and it has its uh, side thrust washer on that. Pull that out, and you look down inside there, and it's like a normal differential. You have your, they call them pinion gears in a locker here, but you have your pinion gears, you have your cross pin that goes this way, you have two short cross pins that go the other way, and then here you have your, um, your spider block that holds all that together. So I'm going to push those out here and show you the rest. But I can't do it with one hand, so let me get this set up again. I'll set this over here on this side, get up closer for you. So a good view, there you go. So with the um, with the retaining pins being out, your cross pin will come out. So that just shows you how that does. I'm gonna do it from this side so everything just doesn't fall out. So your cross pin comes out, and then you have two smaller side cross pins. Those both come out, doesn't matter which side those go on. Spider block, which holds your cross pins together. You have your side gears, or your, I'm sorry, not your side gears, your pinion gears with the pinion gear thrust washers on there, make sure you don't lose those. Those slide out. You gotta kind of rotate it a little bit. Again, make sure you, you maintain the thrust washers. And then on the inside, see if we can get this out. Come on. All right. So on the other side, you have your other splined side gear. So you have all the splines there. That's where your axle shaft goes in. You also have your thrust washer there. And that is all there is to it. So when you look inside here, that's it. ARBs are relatively simple when you look at them, but very, very, very well engineered. They are very strong. Um, I believe them as the gold standard for lockers, for off-road vehicles. Um, the things that are wear items, or at least in my case, the, thing, the one thing that I'm wanting to look at that I have to send a picture back to ARB is this uh, side clutch gear. I'm sorry, just the clutch gear. But anyway, I don't see abnormal wear on it. I'm going to send him a picture anyway so he can verify that for me. And if that's the case, um, then it's probably my compressor. And actually looking at it now, if you look on the backside here, I don't see a whole lot of wear. But if you look 
kind of close at this edge of the gears. You can see how they're beveled a little bit, where the backside's not. And my understanding is, and I could be wrong, when those things lock in, depending on which way you're going, that's gonna be normal, but it's designed as a wear item, so this part can be replaced. But I don't know what's normal wear, what's excessive wear, um, so I'm gonna send this picture to the ARB rep, have him get back to me, and we'll take from there. So if I need a new clutch gear, I'll uh, install that, and if I still continue to have problems, then I'll probably end up taking my compressor part, which I probably will end up doing anyway just to uh, take a look. If it's serviceable, I'm not certain on that one yet. Welcome to the inside of an ARB. Okay, so back to the ARB. Spoke with ARB rep who uh, got the pictures I sent him, and he confirmed that my clutch gear sitting right here is toast and if you look at the pictures there you'll see some beveled edges off of there he said normally when these things get destroyed it's because people are trying to turn on their lockers while their tires are spinning and it grabs and it just breaks them i was kind of describing my problem and he said that the story matched up with what would be considered a compressor problem so in the mail today, I received a new clutch gear and wave spring. So I'm going to go ahead and put the ARB back together now. And then it's time to investigate that compressor.